As homeschoolers, we get to cultivate our kids, these unique and unrepeatable souls, through an incredible variety of tools and techniques. Today's guest is homeschool mom and entrepreneur Chantal Barros, here to share some insights on play-based learning. Stay with us. Welcome to Homeschooling Saints, the podcast that helps you create the homeschool you love for the people you love. Our host is Lisa Maladnik, a Catholic life coach, TV host, best-selling author, and an instructor at Homeschool Connections. Before we get started, remember to subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're watching on YouTube, click the bell to join our channel. Hi, I'm Lisa Maladnik, and today my guest is Chantal Barros, here to talk about play-based learning. This is going to be fun. Chantal Barros is the owner, artist, and creator behind Shining Light Dolls. Shining Light Dolls is dedicated to creating premium toys, books, and gifts designed to nurture the hearts and imaginations of children. Chantal is passionate about making it fun, easy, and accessible for families to pass their Catholic faith on to their children. She lives in Chicago with her husband, Kirk, and their three children. You can find Chantal at shininglightdolls.com. That's in the show notes, and it's exactly how, it's spe- how it sounds. And then her podcast, Saint Stories for Kids, is also in the show notes. Welcome to the program, Chantal. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here today. Yeah, well, I, I, we were just talking before we hit record, and I think it's really important that we start there. Um, you're a mom and an entrepreneur, but this isn't like being in the media is not really your bag. It's not the thing that you wake up in the morning saying, I can't wait to do this. Would you mind just sharing a little of what you were saying to me about kind of how you're wired by God and, and how you see sure. yourself in this journey? <laughs> yeah, sure. So um, I just drew a blank when we were praying and forgot <laughs> part of the Hail Mary which is really <laughs> embarrassing and kind of something I did not expect to happen because, you know, how many rosaries do you say, right? It should just be like second nature. <laughs> um, but I was saying that I, I do, uh, um, God made me a very uh, sensitive person. I'm a highly sensitive person. Some people will label that as like anxious. I prefer sensitive now that I'm <laughs> older. Um, and we were talking about how, you know, these things that sometimes society tell you are handicaps, like having anxiety or, you know, a difference um, is a bad thing. And I really, now that I'm an adult, now that I have children, I see it more as God just made me a certain way. And um, that's actually a blessing because my sensitivities and my awareness of my environment um, helps me in the work that I do. It helps me to be a really good mom. It helps me to be a really good artist and a designer. It's those things that helps me, you know, pick up on the little details because I'm, I'm very like aware of everything, um, which is part of being like a highly sensitive person. And so, um, you know, those struggles are actually blessings in a way, because if, if you look at, if, if you consider it from the perspective of like God made me and he made me for a reason, this way and that's okay and um and also I don't have to be everything right like I can be an introverted artist doing my business and I don't have to be a public speaker and I don't have to be um what's the the word like an influencer I can I don't have to be all things to everybody I can just be who God made me to be and and build on my talents and skills so that's what we were just talking about (laughs) Uh, that's such a beautiful and real place to begin because I feel like every mother listening feels like she comes up short because that's what our society tells us 24 seven. There's this drum beat oh, of yeah. comparison, right? And you're supposed yes. to be an influencer. You're supposed to have a podcast or whatever it is that we yeah. think we're supposed to do. Or you're um, supposed to present yourself as like a perfect Catholic all the time. Like, yes. obviously like what a, what a like mess up for me who owns like a Catholic kid. <laughs> company to be like my brain just like stopped working in the middle (laughs) and just like forgot the words to the prayer like but also I think moms can relate to that too like I have three kids one of them is one years old like part of my brain left my body from each pregnancy like that just happened um so yeah you know God still loves us even when we forget 
important yeah. fears. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I also really love like your self acceptance, you pass that along to your children and to other moms, I have no doubt that that's such a blessing to others. And I even really love like when we do this podcast, I love when kids walk in and out of frame. I love when like we've had mothers nursing on camera, you know, yeah. in, you know, very sensitive. I have ways, no but, doubt that you'll like, hear my kids screaming yeah. at some point. <laughs> yeah, I can hear a little bit of those voices in the background. But I yeah. love it when I hear the voices of children children at mass, I always go and thank the, the mothers and the dad oh, yeah. for bringing their children to church. That is the that is the music of heaven, the sound of children. What are we absolutely. all about as homeschoolers if we can't tolerate the sound of children? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So funny. Anyway, so thank you for your vulnerability and your honesty. I really think that just puts us all at ease. We don't have to be, you know, something we're not. And now we can just really listen to you with open hearts. Really appreciate that so much, Chantal. So would you thank just you. put us in the picture? Give us a little context for, you know, what drew you into homeschooling and what got you to start your business? Oh, gosh, good question. Um, so I'll start with homeschooling. So my oldest child is eight years old and um, love the idea that homeschooling can be catered to the needs of each child. So kind of building on that, like, unique personality and, you know, in what way did they learn? In what way do they approach the world? And in what way does God speak to them best? So my, it's, it's actually interesting, like my two older children, um, I can already see they're so different in the way that they learn. My son really loves stories and listening. He's like an auditory learner. He likes to listen to stories and read books and, and doesn't like handwriting and doesn't like, you know, any sort of workbooks. Whereas my daughter just absolutely loves it, right? She just wants to do workbook after workbook, like she'll just fill page after page. And so I think it's things like that, right? Where you can really cater to each one of your children. And I also just really like being around my kids. I wanted to be involved in their, in their schooling and um, be part of that process. And so we were just really drawn to that as a family that we get to be um, learning all of us together and sort of forming like our family culture and, and just, you know, I like being able to watch them and see what their interests are so I can I can help cultivate that and and help them continue to grow. So that's why we chose homeschooling. And um, so far, it's been it's been really great. We really like it. Yeah. And if, and, if you don't mind, I'd like to just touch back on what you said about being a sensitive person. Like mm -hmm. everything that you just described about reasons for homeschooling touches back to that ability to observe the little details, the important nuances of differences and Absolutely. what you wanted to create as a family. Absolutely. And I think also um, as being like a, a highly sensitive person myself, um, I see that a little bit in my son too. And so I like being able to give him an environment that feels sort of like stress-free and very like joyful and creative and happy that can really allow him to learn in a way that is suited to him. And I think that, you know, I think that's a beautiful thing that homeschooling gives us that option. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So how did you go from homeschooling to running a business? That's always interesting. So it actually <laughs> was the opposite direction. So my business ah. started before my kids came. So I've already been running the business for 10 years. Ah. Um, and the business started because um, I wanted to be able to give something to my nephews. So my brother is 12 years older than me. So he had children a lot sooner than I did. And um, I was their godmother. And I wanted to find Catholic toys for kids that I could give to them because I, I always sort of had this sense that there are things in our culture that children are attracted to, right? Like Spider-Man or Disney characters, right? They get, and this sort of plays into that play-based learning thing. They, they get so immersed in the world of these characters that they, they come alive to children, right? These completely yeah. imaginary people become so real to them. And one of the ways that that happens or very important, probably the main way is through play, right? They get their toys and the toys come to life in their world. And I thought to myself, how cool would it be if we could give children Catholic toys and Catholic products and have the, the saints and Jesus and Bible figures 
come alive to children in the same way that like a Disney princess does or Spider-Man does. And when a child, when a child can form that relationship with um, a person of the faith from a young age, that stays with them for, for life, you know, and as someone who watched a lot of my friends and people that I went to school with sort of leave their faith as they grew into adulthood, but those same people I would see still taking trips to Disneyland or, you know, still watching Disney movies as adults because of that, like that connection, those seeds that were planted in, in early childhood. Mm. And I wanted to sort of play on that idea. And over the years, as we've continued researching play-based learning, we found that that actually completely makes sense because a child is designed by God to play. It's the way that they learn about the world around them. It's how they learn um, both hard skills and soft skills. And, And so it just makes sense to sort of introduce religious toys in the same way that we introduce toys for other areas of learning. Mm, nice. And and so that's a perfect segue into just creating just a simple definition of what do we mean by play-based learning? Obviously, kids learn from play, but what's a starting point that might help parents to sort of look around them and see opportunities? What is it, actually? Absolutely. So play-based learning sort of, it means that a child is engaged and actively participating and um, and happy and joyful in in the activity that they're doing. So play can take a lot of different forms. It can be a board game, or it can be imaginative play. It can be role play. It can be playing with dolls. Um, It it really means that a part of their brain is activated and they are no longer just passively learning. Um, So the difference would be sort of if a teacher was just reading sort of facts off of a sheet in front of a classroom, even if they're very fun and engaging, that would be sort of passive learning. The child is sitting and kind of just taking it in versus play-based learning would be more like you give the children um, a set of blocks and you say like, you know, how tall can you make that? And how many blocks did it take to get it to be that big? They sort of are involved and engaged in the process. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. And, and it's, it's amazing because there's sort of this, like when we use the word like play-based learning, people hear the word play and they think like, oh, that's just recreation. It's not Mm. like actual learning. And so there's sort of like just a little bit of a misconception there because the the actual research shows that children who, let's say you have two groups of children and you read them a story and one group of children is allowed to go and do some play-based learning. And that might mean interacting with some dolls or toys in a way that mimics the story that they just heard. And then a second group of children are read flashcards and asked to repeat the flashcards back. At the end of those two sessions, the children who are allowed to play and interact with the toys um, actually retain the definitions of those words better than the children that were just shown the flashcards. So it, it engages different parts of their brain, right? So you're, you're kind of mm-hmm. lighting up more sectors of the brain when you allow a child to play while learning. Wow, you're you're lighting up all my circuits. When I was first um, <laughs> kind of teaching the Catholic faith at the parish, I, I incorporated what I, I didn't even know it was called play-based learning. To me, it was almost like running a children's party in the faith. Mm-hmm. But I would read the most story, and then we would act out the Bible story together so that they exactly. could live it. And then they exactly. had these amazing, vivid experiences of the Bible stories. They could tell them back. They could draw pictures that were incredibly vivid about them, and they exactly. held on to them because they, as you said, they were fully engaged. Exactly, exactly. And I also think it's really beautiful because I think that like God speaks to us through our imaginations. And when you allow a child that space and that time to sort of imagine, I guess I'm thinking specifically about like, um, you know, the toys that we produce, because our goal is to sort of teach the theology and the lives of the saints through the product. So Mm. when, when a child can interact with a place that I'm imagining actually one of our places it's Jesus and St. Peter walk on water and it's that Bible story. And when you give a child that space to sort of interact with the set and play with it and sort of act out Jesus, act out St. Peter, they definitely internalize it differently than if they just hear the story, right? It's like 
they're allowed to hear God speaking through their imagination about, you know, how does St. Peter feel in that moment of fear when he starts to sing, right? Mm. And and then how does it feel when Jesus comes and saves him? And and they're just allowed to experience that gospel story in a way that I think that really sinks into a place that is deeper and will last longer. And I think that's always just been my goal is to sort of really build relationships between children and God that feel authentic to them and allowing them to play allows them to develop it themselves so that it feels like it's their relationship with God and they weren't just sort of taught it by someone else. It becomes their own. They can own that. And I think that's really important for, for, you know, lifelong retention. Yeah. And I feel like when they're playing with others or with something visual and tactile and interesting to them, like your toys, that you're right, they're firing on a lot of signals, uh, um, circuits, I guess, uh, visual, tactile, um, auditory, everything else, because they're playing, they're interacting. And then, as Absolutely. you said, that imaginative faculty that's so important in our walk with God. Can you tell us a little bit more about some of your other products? What else have you got? Sure. So um, we make classic dolls. They're a little like figures of the saints that kids can play with and we make plush dolls as well they're bigger and those are great for like bedtime snuggles um we have a lot of people tell us that their kids like to snuggle their plushes while they're listening to the saint stories podcast Um, and it kind of like you know again gives them like a physical thing to hold while they're listening to the the stories about jesus and the saints Uh, we also make um, different games right so like memory match games and puzzles we make a lot of classic toys Um, Classic toys are great for play-based learning because they sort of are what people call open-ended play, right? So sometimes toys that have a lot of like bells and whistles and batteries and lights and sounds, um, they're they're fun and kids like them, they're attracted to them, but they don't play with them as long because they require less imaginative play. And so we try to focus on products that ignite the senses for imaginative play and also building other aspects of cognitive development. So, um, you know, patience and, um, you know, uh, soft skills like communication and cooperation and and things like that. So, um, yeah, we make a a wide range of, of products. It's a lot of fun. Mm, Yeah, I love that you said at the start that God kind of made children to play, you know, and and so much in scripture elevates the idea of being childlike of that openness, that open heart, that open imagination, that willingness to explore, to move forward with the Lord wherever he calls us. And that's such a beautiful thing to cultivate. There was um, there's a quote by St. John Bosco that I have loved since I started the business. It's I'll just sum it up. He basically says, like, you need to meet children where they're at if you want them to learn about God. Right. You have to have to become like them. And so for me, that really resonates that children love playing. And so you should play with them. And if you want to teach them the faith, then to me, it makes sense to play with them with faith based toys, Um, you know, especially in a world where there are so many like weird toys nowadays, like. (laughs) You go to the toy store and you're like, I don't know if I want my my child to like associate with like a Dracula Barbie or something like that. <laughs> um, you know, and so being able to choose toys where they're learning the things that you want them to learn. So actually, that's a concept in play based learning. It's called mise en place, right? That's also what they do in cooking, right? Everything in its place before you hmm. start when you're cooking a recipe. And so that's sort of um, what you think about when you're doing play based learning too. You want to you want to set up the playroom in a way that the child will um, learn the things that you want to teach. So it's not just like completely like, you know, wild where you just like, here's some toys and do whatever you want to do, um, which you can <laughs> do too. We're for that too, you know, just completely free time. But um, in regards to play-based learning, you sort of almost want to create like a framework as the adult, as the teacher. And so you might start by reading that gospel story about Peter and St. Jesus and then having that toy be the one that's out on the rug that day, right? And so the kid can Mm. hear the story and then go and interact with it. And um, so it's sort of guided learning. And then as they're playing, you might hear what they're saying, right? It's observing the child and picking up on what they're saying. And you can build on that on their own sort of what Mm. resonated with them that day. And that's also 
um, really, really nice because you can do that with any age child, right? So a younger child might just say like, I'm afraid, right? And an older child might say like, that's interesting that like, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, you might not think. So you can sort of continue that development as the child grows. And in, each time they interact with it, something else might be, might come up for them or might be solidified for them. So it's, it's really like a nice organic way to sort of continue building up the lessons that they're learning. Yeah, I'm just curious, do you as a parent ever enter into the playing with and handling of the toys? I do. I do. So um, uh, I can think of a good example for this. My my two-year-old and my five-year-old were due for a checkup like uh, last month, right? And so we were playing doctor and I was pretending to be the doctor. So that's another you know, good way that play helps children is it helps them to process emotions and fears and new experiences um, and sort of learn about the world around them even more broadly than like a specific lesson that you're trying to teach. So, you know, I was the doctor and we, we pretended what we we're going to do. And that helped ease their fears about, you know, their checkup and going to the doctor. So it's a good tool for those like hard, hard skills that you want to teach children, like vocabulary or geometry, math, counting, but it's also good for soft skills, like, you know, dealing with their emotions and communication. Like, you know, are you afraid? You know, is it okay if I, you know, give you your shot? So being able to process those emotions and soft skills are something that are really learned best through play because it's cooperation, it's communication and uh, patience, um, basically everything you need in order to deal with other people in life. <laughs> Children mm -hmm. learn that through play, right? Whether it's a board game where they're, they're beating you at Monopoly and you have to be patient or, you know, someone put their chess piece somewhere you didn't expect and you have to like sort of be flexible in your thinking and reprocess what your plans are. Um, children who have better soft skills in the younger years actually do better generally speaking, in their careers, because when you're able to be flexible, creative thinking, a good communicator, those are the things you need at your job too. Mm -hmm. So play is absolutely not frivolous. It's really laying the groundwork for some really important life skills. Wow, that's so powerful. That's really good to hear. Um, I just want to, I, I wish we had a way to just show like everybody, everything's obviously they can go to Shining Light Dolls. Um, just want to make sure shininglightdolls.com where we can look at your products. Um, and also don't forget everybody, Saint Stories for Kids. That's Chantal's podcast. And if you go to shininglightdolls.com, you'll find the podcast link yeah. out from there mm -hmm. too. So kind of mm -hmm. one-stop shopping. That's great. So we can do that with our kids. What are some kind of low cost around the house ways to incorporate play? Yeah. So that's a great question. Um, We're outdoors, wherever you want to take this. Absolutely. So I was actually going to use the example of like playing with a mud kitchen or playing outside. Um, you know, with a little kid that could be pretending to be like mommy, right? Like taking a, you know, some mud and some water mixing together. Um, and then as a child gets older, you can be like, well, how many, how many cups of water did you put in? And how many, you know, how many sticks did you add? So then there, you can build on that, like counting. So play is really everywhere. It really, truly is. And it's, um, you know, when we play with babies, when they're first born, we play peekaboo, right? We're mm -hmm. we just like peekaboo. And um, that teaches them object permanence that you're still going to be there. And it's like funny for them. But even these like simple games that we play that are completely free, um, teach them and they're learning through them. And it, mm. it's helping their brain to just form all these like amazing neural connections for these soft skills. So it doesn't have to be expensive. Oh, actually, I should mention that we do have um, like a free busy book on our website that people can download. And that's really fun. And that has, it's like my Catholic busy book and it's like little like um, parents can laminate it and then peel them off and play games like uh, a good example is learning the prayers, which I mentioned that I, <laughs> I apparently I need to do that one more often myself. So, um, I'm kidding. But, so it's a uh, little strips of paper with a different line of the prayer on each, on each strip of paper and they have to put it in order. So simple things like that, that a parent can do, you can either print it from our site for free, or you could, you know, do it yourself, write it on paper, cut it up and then say, 
it's like a puzzle, right? You have to put the prayer back in order like it's a puzzle. And even just doing that, they're more likely to retain it than um, if you were just to have them like read it over and over Uh again. So just little ways that you incorporate an element of engagement, an element of like fun and joy and learning in a happy way where they kind of get excited about learning. Um, that helps. Mm. So yeah, lots of, lots of cost-free ways. And, um, another great, um, thing that I've seen people do with, um, older children is, um, building with Legos. So, um, using Legos for the principles of like, uh, physics, like making a spinning top or a scale, um, things mm. like that. There are great websites that, and resources if you go to Pinterest and, <laughs> parents can find that and sort of, you know, use the, some of the toys that they have and repurpose them for other things as well. Yeah. Fantastic. I love it. I, you've got, again, my brain is just, um, popcorning all over the place because you see kids do our joke in our family was that, um, the younger kids at Christmas time would find it more interesting to play with the boxes and bows and things on Christmas morning than the actual toys sometimes because absolutely they can make play out of anything. But then, of course, there's also the stories about who got their first doll and carried it around. I'm raising yeah. my hand, you know, <laughs> as if it was a real baby for days and days after, well, long time afterwards. So kids really can connect with all sorts of things in the environment Absolutely. imaginatively. So good. And you've touched a little bit too on the educational benefits, stimulating imagination, being creative, flexible, problem solving, anything else that you've noticed that, that gets generated by play or that you'd like to call out for us? Um, I think a really important thing that I notice gets generated by play is empathy. I mm. think that when children um, act out the lives of people, characters, they they learn empathy, right? So you're putting yourself literally in another person's shoes. And then especially if you have another child playing as well. And that is such an important part of life. And also an important part of being like a good Christian is learning empathy and Mm -hmm. having that ability to put yourself in another person's shoes. um, That just always amazes me that when a child is playing, you'll hear them saying things that you didn't even like realize they were picking up on. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's, it's a beautiful way also to sort of um, allow your child to kind of show themselves to you as well. So you can Mm -hmm. kind of see them. What are they thinking and what are they feeling? So I guess it also teaches you a little bit of, empathy and um a little bit of a glimpse into their world right like what is speaking Mm -hmm. to them right now and you know how is god acting in their lives that you can respond to so it's it's um i love it for the soft skills and especially since like the lives of the saints teach us so many of those things like charity and love and self-sacrifice and bravery and all of these things that um you know that's to me, that's like always my focus is I'm trying to create good people. Um, they may not be like brain surgeons, although they might be their smart, their smart kids. But uh-huh. you know, for me, it's really I'm trying to create good people, yeah. and and um, and so allowing them to play and explore all of these emotions and um, it just I feel like it's such a beautiful way to like let God speak to you about your children. Mm, I love that. I love that, that you're learning about them while they're playing too. All right. It's just so exciting that something so simple and natural for children, because we think we have, well, a lot of us, you know, and I was the same way when I first pulled my daughter out out of the public school, I thought we had to be seated at the table doing those workbooks and things, you know, all day long. It was awful. And then I started learning from other homeschoolers and we started to have a lot more fun and the learning really accelerated and her confidence and mine really jumped through the ceiling. So a lot of what's naturally there in them and in our relationship. Any final thoughts you'd like to leave us with, Chantal? Yeah, actually, you just said something that really um, lit up my brain, which is that like (laughs) sometimes as parents, we feel so much pressure that we have to be doing it a certain way in order to make sure that our kids are successful. And I think that um, this, the more I research this area, the more I feel confident that if we sort of just embrace the natural way that God made children and let them be who they are and just sort of like work with them, that they will actually not only meet our expectations, but probably surpass them. 
Um, and, and we don't have to follow like one mode of learning and we can, we can just see where, you know, God takes us all. <laughs> yeah. And I love the humility of that, that openness to, you know, where that play takes us and how God speaks to them in their imaginative play and how, what the parents can learn and observe and kind of flow along with that. Even, uh, even as you're guiding, even as you're placing something in their paths and, and, and making invitations. And, and then as they get older, of course, doing some of the more demanding work, but, but what a beautiful foundation this lays for trust and you're entering into their world and encouraging it and validating it and all of that. So gosh, Chantal, this has been so deep and so rich. Thank you so very, very much for so taking much. the time out of a busy day. It was lovely hearing a little bit of the voices of your children here and there and the podcast that always makes me so happy because this is a, you know that we're all about that absolutely um, yeah. <laughs> yeah they're always they're always here <laughs> yeah. I, love, I love it so much <laughs> yeah but thank you so much for having me it was absolutely my pleasure i love talking with you oh good we'll have to do it again i know this isn't your 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 calling in life to be in the media but we really appreciate you it was a beautiful conversation um would love to have you back all right everybody thank you so much for listening and have a very blessed and sweet day in the lord god bless you and that's our show for today our program is sponsored by homeschoolconnections.com be sure to subscribe to homeschooling saints and leave us an honest review god bless you and thank you for joining us